Good morning everybody and welcome to the Facebook Live event which is with SDL Auctions and myself Louise Jeffries and uh, in association with uh, Agents Here to Help. And uh, today I wanted to talk about uh, understanding the true value of your property um, and uh, that's kind of a world fraught with danger really to understand what your property is really worth um, and, and it can be a huge minefield for people and you will get massive varying degrees of uh, advice and uh, uh, a steer on what your property is truly worth. Um, so that's why we're going to explore and talk you through some of our insights from an auction perspective um, and understanding a bit more about how the marketplace works. Um, and you know, I have been within, you know, worked in the property industry in different guises solidly for the last 10 years. Um, and I've bought and sold houses prior to that and, uh, you know, had had some dreams and, and, and watch with interest what happens in my own marketplace um, and my own property. Um, so, you know, we've all got a vested interest in, it is our single biggest asset for most people that they own. And so how we get that bit right is really telling. And part of the system that we have in England and Wales is really down to, um, it, it impacts on where our true value sits on our property. And that's why there's some subjectivity uh, to that process. If you're selling property in Scotland, it is a bit different because you will have a home report done before you market your property and that will have a surveyor's indication on the value of your home. Um, and, uh, and, and that really is the starting point of the price you market your property in, in Scotland. So in, in the world that where it's a bit different is that, you know, I could uh, have some hope value in my property and think it's, you know, worth loads more than it, it might be because I've, uh, you know, I've got particularly eye, a particular great eye for interior design, or it might be because, you know, uh, we've extended it out the back, or whatever it might be that gives me the perception that my house might be worth a bit more um, than others, or, you know, that plot of land I might have that's got some hope value, whatever it might be. So that's just a general introduction to the minefield that we're in, in terms of understanding property values. Uh, please understand I'm not coming at this from, uh, you know, championing only auctions in this space because I think once you understand what you're looking to achieve, you work out which route is best for you. Um, it's understanding the nuances of your valuation that you might have if you get your property valued for mortgage purposes um, or as a potential buyer that your mortgage lender will do an assessment of that value. Um, and, uh, and, and I know a colleague of mine in the future is going to talk about that uh, auctions and surveying and what we call private treaty sales and for those of you who don't know what that is it basically means if you're selling with an estate agent so one of my new things at the moment is I'm really conscious that we those of us who are in the industry and in any guys whether it's in, in property, in estate agency, in financial services, in conveyancing, in all of those movable parts, we all talk a lot of jargon because that's what we're used to talking about. So one of the things I'm going to really try and do is not be too jargony. Um, so when I talk about a private treaty sale, that's about essentially you selling it with an estate agent in the traditional manner. Okay. So what is the value of your home? Dun, dun, dun. Right, I'm going to give you the, no, I'm not going to give you the perfect answer because it doesn't exist, right? Um, fundamentally, there's a question you have to ask yourself when you're looking at the value of your property. And it's simple as, who is going to buy it and why? And that's something that a very sage old colleague of mine has shared with me on many occasions. Um, I, I, I can't press it, it's my own words. It's absolutely... Who is going to buy your property and why? Because that starts you thinking about what it's worth to somebody else, not what it's worth to you. I think the thing that people forget in, in lots of cases when they're looking to sell their property, it's because they want something different. So the things that might be perceived as negatives to them 
will be a negative for somebody else. Um, and so if you're moving because you don't want to be on a main road, you know, that's going to be an objection that other people coming around to your property will have. If you're moving because the garden's vast and you can't cope with it anymore, um, then that's going to be something else that somebody is going to view in your property. So it's understanding who is going to buy your property and why they're going to be motivated to buy it. Again, I am not a valuer. I am not a qualified surveyor. I'm talking about the, the behavioural things that affect somebody's choices that they make and, and hopefully give you some advice and a steer that I've learnt from my colleagues um, and, uh, and understanding the marketplace of some of those choices. When we look at properties from an auction perspective, um, it's always about understanding what potential there is in that property um, and, and that's something that perhaps when you're viewing a property in a normal estate agency a world, you're not necessarily looking at what am I, at what value am I going to add? You know, it's it's a different driver. Um, but that's not to say that other people aren't viewing your property with through that lens. Um, you know, if you've got a corner plot with you know an example or an opportunity that might have for an extension, or you know, there are other things that suddenly makes a property more valuable than perhaps what it looks like on paper. Um, in, an, in a normal world, let's talk about a, a normal, when I say a normal world, I'm talking about the, you know, eight out of ten people at least, probably more, that want to sell their property and they go to an estate agent. So, what they do is, you know, the best advice is always get a number of estate agents around to value your property. And estate agents have a really tough job because I know if somebody came in and I had three viewings, I, I've had these examples, so I, 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 could, I could share the specifics, but generically, if somebody says, right, I need, you know, to sell my house, I'm, you know, keen to do so because of these reasons, I'm not just sort of what I call tire kicking the, um, the, the marketplace, if you like, I'm not just looking to sell it if I can get more from it than it's worth. Um, in that world, you traditionally get, or it would be recommended you get three people round to value your property. I don't know if you've ever done that, but I pretty much guarantee you'll get three different valuations. And that's for very real reasons that says, actually nobody truly knows the value of your property, right? There's some tolerance, don't get me wrong, it doesn't mean to say that you'll go one value it at 150, one at 250. What I'm saying is, is that there will be a tolerance and that will be something you're either comfortable with or not. And I firmly believe that if something is uh, marketed and valued too cheaply, it will fly out the door and you'll get 100 viewings and you know, you'll be, uh, uh, and guess what, it will, you know, it, it will then become really evident that your property has been valued too low. When I say too low, that's okay. Because you know what happens is the more people you get looking at the property, um, the more people you will get interested in buying your property. And that's what we work to in auctions. That's why when we get that price right, when we set a guide price that is attractive enough to bring more people to be interested in your property, that's when they set the value of your home through their competitive bidding. And that's very different to perhaps somebody making an offer in an estate agency environment. Now again, the difference is, is that not all properties will be suitable for auction. Um, and it's not just about the property, it's about somebody's individual motivation to sell their property. Some people will be more motivated by time than they will be about getting an extra £5,000. Because that's why, even in an estate agency environment, sometimes if you're a cash buyer, you're proceedable or you're not in a chain, you might be in a better position than somebody who has to sell their house. So it's exactly those principles that mean when we're pricing for auction, it's looking at those nuggets that says, you know what, there's some potential here. There's a really realistic vendor that is motivated. So if that's me, it's because I want to move on. I don't want to wait for an, an estate agency private treaty sale that may take uh, four to six months at best and also has a chance of falling through. So it depends what my motivation is. 
and what potential there is in my property. So in, in, a, in a typical way, there's probably certain cycles. For an estate agent, there's a cycle that says, you know, your, mar your house hits the market really strongly um, and its best chance of selling uh, in that way is probably within the first two weeks. It's fresh to the market, it's got shiny pictures, it's new, people who have not been looking suddenly get a notification from any number of the portals, whether it's Rightmove or Zoopla or on the market, and then they go, oh, right, okay, I want to go and look at this. Um, and then, you know, we're in a different world post and during Corona that says, actually, we want lots of people to view that property before they walk physically in the door. So we've got new technology. In auctions, we're working with uh, Matterport. So you, it feels like you're going into the property. You know, it's really weird, but brilliant technology that gives me as much of a feel short of driving up and pulling on the drive than it ever can with anything else. So when I'm in that situation, I know whether it's right for me. And I think, oh, you know what? I know what I would be prepared to pay for something. So in that estate agency environment, that first couple of weeks is like pow you know if you don't get strong viewings and you don't get strong interest in that first couple of weeks it's more than likely because it's probably priced incorrectly um, and the market's not tolerating it or you've got comparable houses that yours doesn't sit well against and some of that's on timing some of that's down to whether you know a property is on the market three doors down the road that's very comparable but is on for less and that may be simply because they chose a different estate agent who set a different valuation. Not vastly different in most cases, but there'll be a little difference. And it's interesting that that's a really good point about understanding the value of your property and the difficult job estate agents have in that space. Because if I go into you, you know, from an auctions perspective, I am uber realistic. If anything, I want to get you to a point where we can make your property as attractive to people as possible by setting a guide price that is going to bring people out of the woodwork to go, I want to go and have a look at that house. I want, I want it, I want, and, and I look at the potential and look at the opportunity and look at what I could you know, potentially earn from that property from an investment return or what I could do to it for my own personal house. So you've got that, auction positioning that says I want you to be uber realistic what's your absolute bottom line that you're prepared to achieve for your house and when you give me that bottom line I'm going to poke it a little bit as well and say you know really really if somebody came to you and you had an agreed sale that quickly what would you do um, and that motivation changes when you take that into an estate agency for a period of time and then suddenly you know you haven't had any viewings you haven't had any interest you think your estate agent has lost interest. I promise you they haven't. They are so motivated to sell your house, those estate agents. They need to sell your property. That's how they make a living. But sometimes they are constrained by the value expectations that you put on your property. And that's the difficult piece. And so an estate agent will often, in a really competitive market, follow your lead rather than following their own advice and their own comparable evidence that says actually your property is probably worth this. Or if we price this more realistically, we'll get more people to view and look at it. So that's where the, the balance comes in that, in, the, in that. At a private treaty estate agency sale, maybe then at four weeks you start to think, is this price right? Maybe I should come down a little bit, you know? And then you become more realistic. And actually, I'll tell you something from an estate agent's point of view, they're thinking, if only they'd priced it like that at the beginning, I could have hit that market as a wow. So please listen to that advice when you're talking to your estate agent, because they do know your marketplaces. And try not to be seduced by the agent that values your property at the highest. Everybody, you know, it depends on who you are as, as, as an individual and the psychology behind it is that sometimes I love hope value. You know, I'd love to think my property is worth more than the man next door whose house is exactly the same because I've got a really funky garden and I, you know, I've got a bar in the garden and I've, you know, knocked through and I've got, I don't know, a hot tub in the, in the kitchen, whatever it might be. I don't have a hot tub in the kitchen. 
at all. Um, but it's, it's those sorts of things that say try not to be seduced in that because it will only lead you on, a, I've always termed this, is it, it becomes a journey of disappointment. If you'll set your stall out is, is that my property could get that, then you know what? You just chip away and you get to that point of what's it really worth? And fundamentally, that's about what somebody at that moment in time in that marketplace is prepared to pay for it. And that dictates the value of your property today. If you don't want to sell your property today, then that might be different. You can change that view in the future. Um, but you do only get one chance to hit that market if you are truly motivated to sell your property. What happens then on... Uh, let, let's skip the whole process and say you've sold your property. What then happens if the buyer buying your property is a mortgage buyer is that they will have a lender to come round and do a, an RICS, a, a RICS valuation that will tell the lender it's worth what they're lending against. Um, and that's really, don't ever be confused that that valuation is for you as a buyer. Um, it is about supporting the vendor's decision to lend the money. So is it a safe bet for the vendor to lend that money? And on the back of that valuation, that's what will happen. Now some of you, in, in a very strong market, what tends to happen is, when a surveyor does a valuation, um, they, they will look really strictly at the comparable evidence. Comparable evidence is other properties similar to yours that have sold for similar prices. And it might be, that some of that comparable evidence hasn't caught up with the fact that now you're in a really attractive you know, part of the world and actually it doesn't take into, a fact, into account that you've got a corner plot and, and the man across the road has done a, a, you know, an, an extra property because he hasn't sold it. So the surveyors haven't got that evidence to say your property might be, may be worth more than it is. Or they may have some evidence because on that side of the road there's a mining issue and all of those properties sold for you know 20% less than the market value but yours isn't but his comparable evidence because it's only across the road is that so there's some complexity about the the, the official valuations now let's take it take it back a stage of going when we're looking at auction I was talking to a number of my colleagues before I, I did this Facebook live today um, and, and really interesting insights because they go into people's homes and value properties day in, day out. Um, value land, value commercial properties, you know, you, you name it. That, you know, we have a broad uh, skill set of people who can go and work out whether a property is suitable for auction or not. Um, and ultimately, you know, there's, there's a huge amount of, you know, subjectivity for anybody you have to take into account a number of different matrix within that that says you know what's truly behind the vendor's motivation to sell what potential there is in the property what the buyer marketplace is for that type of property um, you know, I know we'll, you know, we'll have a street in a certain part of the country that we'll know because it's it, it's hugely attractive to an investment community, um, and so therefore that investment we know that there's go that's going to attract a certain type of buyer. So it's it's putting those those movable parts into place. So when an auction value is going out looking at that, they will consider all of those things. But one of the really important things that I think. I hadn't realised until I was talking to some of our, our valuer community is it's also understanding the risk profile of our sellers. So it's very different when you put a property on for the market with a traditional estate agent because you don't, there's no risk involved in that. It will either not sell, that's your greatest risk, or that the property valuation, you know, it'll only go down. That's your risk in that environment. You know, the risk is at auction, you setting a reserve price. Now, it can't sell for less than that, so great news that, you know, the, the, the risk to you is being brave about what that is. Being brave because if we set a guide price that is attractive enough, we will draw more people 
to your property, to your land, to your listing. You know, it's about being brave. So it's understanding your risk profile. And we talk about that in financial services of understanding somebody's attitude to risk. And I think that's a really important part of you thinking about your property and thinking about the way you sell it is understanding your attitude to risk. And if you have no appetite to risk and you are in not in any time constraints for selling your property, then the, probably the best way for you to sell your property is through an estate agent in the private treaty way. If you have some time constraints or requirements that you would like to dispose of your property in a certain way, you have some opportunity and you also know that, that there may be every chance, and gosh, we've got so many examples, that your property will achieve far above the reserve price. That's not to say we will always recommend the lowest of guide prices. Um, it's about getting that balance right of what is right for you as the owner or vendor of that property, what is right for the marketplace, and what is right for us and the way we market it. Within our auction cycle, there's a number of ways. So we run, uh, you know, on the back of uh, the world of lockdown and the coronavirus pandemic, um, I could not be prouder of the business that has emerged through that process. We have now running the largest virtual national auction this month, next Tuesday on the 30th of June. Please watch, it's, uh, there's, there is genuinely something for everybody in that, in that sale. And what happens in that is a national auction that attracts a national audience. So, you know, we're not just talking about people who maybe, you know, go on right move and looking for properties in Derbyshire or looking for properties in Lancashire. You know, this is, this is about looking at, at in investors, looking at across the board. And our auction cycle at the moment is monthly. So at the, at the point of listing, it will be at least four weeks, at, at most four weeks in that initial cycle. Um, and that ensures that we have the right time to market the property we hit that marketing hard and strong. Um, we encourage as many viewings as possible. In our world today, you know, we're doing a huge amount of virtual viewings as well, and uh, and that really does, uh, you know, make sure that you are genuinely going to get people interested in your property who have seen it. Um, it stops a lot of time wasting from everybody's perspective. I know estate agency are, are doing that a huge amount as well. We can't do block viewings like we used to be able to do before, where we would, you know, in a really attractive property, we would really have to limit that. And you might only, going back to, you know, actually we can only do 10 viewings at a time. We're doing one-on-one -on -one viewings at the moment and supporting that with great technology. So as I say, that some of the YouTube or Matterport viewings, it does feel like you're in the property. And, uh, and if, you have, have, if you go on a viewing with Rob Stone, even if it's a virtual one, you feel like you're there with him anyway. And um, so again, it's, it's giving people time in your property and time to understand that. And again, with an auction, there is also a legal pack for them to understand and work out, you know, they can get some expectations of what that potential is um, and what the restrictions might be. So it's, a, you know, when you look at the comparisons of how to value your property. I, I don't mean to sort of say, Oof, you know, it's up in the air. That there is definitely a way of getting a feel for the value of your property. But it is just that. It is subjective. It is down to an individual's position on your property, whether that's an estate agent or an auction valuer. And they will come at it from a different viewpoint. And they will come at it from a different viewpoint of understanding what your expectations are. I've had a question from Chris to say, will you be reverting back to going to the regional auctions again when market conditions change? So Chris, in answer to that, um, I, I think none of us know yet what the future holds. I think what we know absolutely is, is that we have got such a brilliant proven way of selling properties at auction now. Um, I think we would never stop doing what we're doing now. Um, I think at the point we are able to go back to a traditional uh, room-based auction, I think we're going to have to assess that when we can and understand the numbers that we may be able to, to look at. 
I know there was some uh, an, an auction that was held with social distancing recently in a not in a not in a property environment but in a in a chattels world where it's fine art and things um, and it loses a bit of its magic I've got to say um, I think uh, I think we've been able to create that magic brilliantly with Andy Parker and our other auctioneers hopefully Rory is going to be coming back to doing some, some of that auctioneering with Andy um, and and we've created that that alchemy and and that that really that it's it's a it's an atmosphere it's an atmosphere that creates that competitive environment and it is thrilling to watch it really is that you know there's a reason why everybody watches homes under the hammer and we've got our own version of it now running monthly um and uh and, and we're really proud of that we've also got ongoing daily auctions that happen um in the online space um and and those lines of what's suitable for online and what's suitable what was suitable for a room invert a room world that's really kind of those lines are a bit blurred now so it's about doing what's right for the customer it's about doing matching their time scales um, and seeing what works for them but uh, I think what we've what we're very proud of is, is that we've got a business that uh, can deal with disposing of people's properties who are motivated to do it um, and actually the results we're getting we're really proud of um, and some of the stats that uh, you'll, you'll see if you follow SEL auctions anyway, which I hope is why you're watching today, um, you know, we've got significant uh, results in terms of what people achieve over the reserve price. But that's the, that's the, the magic of that is that you have to be happy if it gets to that reserve. You know, that's about really understanding uh, you as a vendor of what you're truly going to be happy with, but giving you the chance to achieve as much as your property is worth. And often, I suppose to, to sort of go full circle, often the market will dictate what your property is worth. We all have some expectation of what that is. Um, I'll share a personal story of, of you on that front. That says, um, I was uh, you know, uh, selling a property and you know, ideally we wanted, uh, you know, it was £375,000. It was a lovely four bedroom barn conversion. Um, and that's what we wanted for our property. Um, and we put it on the market and really quickly uh, we got um, a number of viewings um, and we got an offer within about three weeks um, for £350,000. And uh, we rejected that offer because uh, we thought it, it, we could have achieved more. This was many years ago, probably eight years ago, and uh, um, and we rejected that offer. And then we sat on the market for much longer. We lost a bit of faith with our estate agent um, because they didn't have anywhere to go with us. Um, and uh, and and in the end, as time progressed, you know, we became more motivated. We needed to sell that house six months down the road it's still on the market and you know, oh, we don't really want to take less than 350 but you know what can we do um we dropped the price to 350 you know that if only we'd marketed at that in the first place you know we would have secured that sale um and uh, and then another three months down the road you know so we're looking at nine months now we then accepted 325,000 pounds for the property it then went into a, set, a surveying piece because the buyer was getting a mortgage and there was a patch of damp. You know, we became even more motivated. Oh my God, we're going to lose our buyer. And guess what happened, you know? We then had to negotiate because we had to negotiate another £10,000 off that property. So we ended up getting £315,000 for that house. Now, if I knew then what I know now, we would have marketed that property with that as the guide price, you know, or uh, probably lower than £300,000 as a guide price and attracted a lot more people and probably achieved more than 350 in the first place and it would have happened much quicker. So all of those things suddenly become, what's my property's worth? Well, you know what? It is what you are prepared to take for your property and it's what somebody else is prepared to pay for it. And that question that I go back to from the beginning is always saying, who 
who's going to buy it and why? And if there's potential in it, and if there's motivation in it, then there are other ways of selling your property and getting different outcomes. Um, but the, the upshot of it is, there is no perfect piece of um, advice that says your property in that area looks valued at this. Now there are some properties with lots more comparable evidence, you know. So Chris has made the point that hindsight, you know, if we had that hindsight, we'd always know that. But actually what that hindsight has taught me is, is that, you know, you do only get one chance to start the marketing of your property. And if you're truly motivated at the beginning, then there is a way to approach the valuation of that property. And if your motivation changes, then there's other things you can do. You know, we deal with a lot of auction um, partners within the estate agency forum. So, you know, we've got over a thousand estate agents that refer properties to auction. A lot of them, they have started on the, the private treaty estate agency market. Um, and then because of circumstances or timescales or it might have fallen through or, or any number of things that may happen in that chain that somebody's motivation changes. And so auctions can be a real, real solution to still achieve the correct value of that property. And it will, you know, we, I talk about it in, from a comparison point. Of, I don't think there's a one way is better than the other. I really don't. I, I, you know, I, I'm a, I, I, I live and breathe auctions every day. Um, but it's not right for every, every person um, and every set of circumstances. I, I, madness to say that. Um, I, think it's work, I think it works for more people than probably is the current exposure. Um, but, but, but at best, that's probably up to 20% of the marketplace. But in a private treaty world, you start here at a price. You know, an estate agent will come and value your property and say it's worth £200,000. And then from an auction point of view, we might go, okay, you might have that conversation and say, we're gonna set the value of your property a little bit down here, right? Because we want to attract different people and get competitive bidding going. So when that, in that estate agency position up here that says, I want 200,000 pound for my property, that's when I'm gonna start marketing it out. Whereas realistically, they know that, actually they kind of want about 180. That's the position. They want to 180 and they'll market it up there and know that they'll probably take a couple of offers. I'm just, I'm talking, this is just an example. I know it depends on the marketplace you're in. Um, and whereas in an auctions point of view, if I know that that somebody's bottom line is 180, we are able to start the guide price at 10% lower than that. So I'm looking at that price and going, you know what, I can start marketing that property at 162,000 pounds as a guide price which means I'm going to attract people that you know wouldn't have looked at your property at £200,000. And you know, you, you, you lose people along the way because they'll go, oh, actually, I'm, I'm in that competitive bidding world. And guess what? In a private treaty world, people tend to come down to that price and it emits that value. And in an auction world, we come up to that price. So we end up there or thereabouts. There's loads of examples, by the way, on both parts that says, actually, in that estate agency world, you, you hit 190. Or in that est auction world, it went way above the reserve price and got to 205, you know? So honestly, it's, it's understanding that there is no set valuation. Even if you had three surveyors, dare I say this to our, our surveying community, that there will be a tolerance. There is an accepted tolerance in the world of surveying. That's the lender's you know, expectation. This is by a qualified RIC surveyor. So it is quite possible that you would get a variation in your value even with three RIC surveyors. So you can only imagine the variation you'll get if you have three estate agency and an auction valuation. So it's really getting all of that information and putting it into what works best for you. Because one size does not fit all and one valuation is not the right valuation. It's thinking about flexing that muscle. Who's gonna buy it and why? And what's my motivation? What's the market gonna say my property's worth? So I hope I've given you an insight. I hope I haven't just kind of left you with, well, that's no help at all, Louise. You just told me that there's no way to know the value of my property. Um, 
but but I, I have at least been honest. I have at least been honest and uh, and know that uh, if you have any questions on it, any of us in the team will be happy to help um, and happy to support you in any of your house moving goals um, or investment goals that you might have, whether that's for auction or whether that's an introduction to one of our brilliant estate agency partners. You know, we're, honestly, we really are here to help. With the help of uh, agents here to help, I know there's so many topics that we're trying to cover to educate people in the marketplace here. Um, I'm very proud to be part of it. Um, and, uh, and if there's any questions, then we will happily uh, uh, answer them at any time. So thank you for watching. Enjoy the sun. Um, I'm hoping that we get away. I get away from my screen at some point today and see that there's a beautiful blue sky out there. Um, and in the meantime, please join us and, and have a look at the auction next Tuesday on the 30th of June. We have, uh, I know, at last count, 138 lot, 168 lots, I believe. Um, and we have on, ongoing online sales that happen daily throughout our auction process. Um, so please have a look. Um, you'll probably see a property like yours, you know, in some guise, or a bit of land, whatever it might be. Anyway, best of luck out there, and, uh, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.